Gina was married to my dad, and they split up. Well, then you and her. We're not together. Oh, honestly, your mind. It jumps about. My ex, Antoine, you said a brain like a puppy. I was straining at the lead. He meant it's a compliment. Look, my dad works abroad, so now you know. Look, I am sorry this has happened. I'll do my best to keep Gina out of bother. Yeah, that's the thing. Your best isn't good enough. You haven't got this under control. Why else would you come nosing round our street to check? If you can't guarantee that the trolling's over, you can't stop us from going to the police. One. Okay. And if we're sticking to your five-second rule thing of yours, then I want to explain what happened with the camera stuff, like, now. It's fine. No, seriously, though, cos I know Nathan took the blame, and he will pay you back, but it was my fault. Well, actually, it was the horrible thieving scumbag's fault. Exactly. But I let him in. I can't believe I fell for it. He conned you. There's some nasty people out there. I'll be honest, when Nathan rang to tell me I wasn't exactly doing cartwheels, that kit was worth a lot of money, but me and Nath go back a long way. We're not gonna fall out over it, all right? My mum was brave, oh. unstoppable. She was the people's princess. Oh, name a bandwagon and I'll sour on it, all right. Free papers, local radio, that time on Granada Reports. They did anyone buy it? People know. She's not a freedom fighter, she's a phony. You sound like you're taking Auntie Gina's side. Oh, well, she was good to Sally all them years ago when she had cancer. But when Gina got ill, silence. We had no idea. Well, Sally knew. Gina told me. She reached out to her more than once, and all she got was a card with a rainbow on it and a little book of calm. That isn't my mum, I swear. Yeah, but we sorted it. Her real family. The disappearing acts, the conspiracy theories, the spending sprees. Do you think my dad chose to work in Qatar? No, because that's where the money is. Gina racked up debts in their name. Thousands. So he's out there. All work, no life, no wife, and I am here, babysitting. Well, I am sorry to hear that, but you need to up your game. A death notice in the paper. A pig's heart through the post. I am not condoning what she did, but I am not going to throw Gina under the bus. Not when there's wrong on both sides. You go to the police, I will go to the papers. Right, Smiler. How's tricks? You know <clears throat> how you're always telling me off that uh, price of everything, value of nothing, guff? Yeah, it's not guff. You are cynical sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes I'm right. I just heard your ex on the phone ripping into me. I'm a useless flake who still lives with his mum and he's going to put us to the test. And he's really miffed that I'm coming here tonight. No, I saw him this afternoon. He was fine. More than, he was He was pleased you were coming. All oh, right, so I'm lying, am I? No, I didn't say that. Well, we'll ask him, shall we? When he gets here. Mum, you will not believe what Eliza Ainsworth's done to her eyebrows. Babe, you've ruined the surprise. Ta-da! Benadorm, yes. Have you packed my pink bikini? Um, well, it's not Benadorm, actually, but it's somewhere equally as good. Is that my cagoule? I have booked us the cosiest cottage in the Peak District. Real fire. Eh? We can toast marshmallows. Is the Wi-Fi? You're gonna love it. Mum, it's a deal breaker. Of course there is. There's all mod cons. Right, go on, go and pack some of your favourite things. MP3 player, some books. Teddy One Eye. As if. For old time's sake. Oh, and you can bring your recorder, but not your violin. What is this? A holiday in a car in the same week? Have you had a win on a scratch card? No, I just. Well, I think we've had a rotten year and we deserve cheering up. Oh, and my recorder's at my dad's. Look round. Oh, Mum, I'm tired. Can't you go? Amy, go round there and say goodbye to your grandma and your daddy. Might give me some spends. Get out of here. Oh, and babe, I need you to be back here for 8.30 at the latest. Do you understand me? Yeah. Oh, and I'll fill you in on Eliza's eyebrows later. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, 
that she had a vein on the side of her head. It was throbbing like something out of Tom and Jerry. Tracy? No! Amanda Smith from the golf club, keep up. Tracy wasn't there, hence the vein. So I said, Amanda, dear, don't shout at the monkey. It's the organ grinder who's blocked your calls. <laughs> well, have you uh, related this to Her Majesty? <laughs> well, not yet. But you can be sure that Miss Smith will hunt Tracy down, hopefully not wielding a four-iron. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really should sell tickets. <laughs> hey, the rumble in the jungle, the thriller in Manila, the glowers in the flowers. <laughs> in the I'll, I'll be back in a sec. Sarah, not to tell tales out of school, but I had a chat with Bethany earlier. Did you? Was she buy me a bouquet? Thought not. Well, she didn't stay very long. She said, um, you'd had a falling out. Make out was my fault, I suppose. Well, I, I think she could do with some TLC. Oh, with the first in line, Mary, I feel like I've lost my right arm. She feels the same. Did she say that? <laughs> ah. No, she didn't, did she? Oh, well. Well, if she comes round again, I'll be waiting. I'll be stepping on eggshells, but I'll be waiting. So, please, if you see her, will you tell her, Mary? Summer's not summer without a trip to Glassdoor. I've been going since, well, since the days you could bunk it for nothing if you had the bottle. Yeah, we lost our old tent once in a mudslide. A mate of mine, Chugger, got trench for cost him a couple of toes. Oh, no way. Camping's for Muppets. These days, we get a Winnie Bago. Backstage passes, drinking with the bands, and those boys can drink. I was going to get another, but uh, Nathan said to not keep you out late. Oh, what is he like? I'm not going to turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> well, some of the lads are coming round, did he not say? And he didn't run the hoover round? Uh, he probably just forgot. Look, I know that you said it's cool about the camera and stuff, but surely you use it for work as well. You're in the same business, aren't you? Well, I'm more on the investment side. My main game's security. Talking of which, uh, it's time I escorted you home. What's it to be? Number nine, boss? I will if you will. Ah, oh, you wouldn't know. Your breath of fresh air, you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> what are we having? Same again? Drinks from me. <laughs> uh, and a lime and soda, please. Um, make it a brandy. I thought we'd play a little quiz. You know that game? Just yes or no answers. I'll start. <clears throat> Drew. Did you plan to get Billy on his own tonight, away from Mummy's boy? It's really simple, just yes or no. Nothing against you, but Billy and I have a lot of catching up to do. I'll take that as a yes. True. do you intend to put our relationship to the test? I mean, I, I did say that I didn't think it was your style. You heard? Every word, mate. Oh, I'm sorry, I can explain. Um, Todd and I are solid. He is caring, funny, and brave. We've been through hell and high water, so if you are here to throw a spanner in the works, then I've come to ask you something. You might want to wait for those drinks. What are we waiting for? Drum roll. I'm dying. Right lung adenocarcinoma. Secondaries in my hips and shoulders. And a little uh, black dot on my brain that the docs are still bickering about. I'm on the next bus out there, mate. True, I'm, I'm really sorry. My mouth runs away with me. Forget the sensitive vicar stick. I've, I've had weeks to come to terms with it. You haven't. They're giving you a time scale. I asked my consultant. I wouldn't want to know, mate. She's talking a small number of months. Drew, I'm really sorry. And for the other stuff. That... I didn't come to Wallow. Summer's going to need a guardian. She's a typical 12 year old. Selfie mad, gobby, little mix on constant loop. But she's generous and open minded and full of hugs. Adopting her made my life complete. 
He won't feel much for us straight away, but with time, I need to know she's going to a good home. Oh, you're gonna sound like a puppy. I mean, to a family that shares my values. What about her other dad? No, Charlie, he, um, he bailed after a year. He couldn't hack it. <clears throat> I've been battling it. I'm bitter. Always tried to be a good bloke. Someone's never hurt a fly. Why us? If I could just get her settled, I feel I could go in peace. And if the answer's no, then fair enough. But will you at least talk about it? Yeah, of course we will. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Night. Oh, yeah, yeah. hello. Um, Neil, do you fancy a beer? Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. Oh. Have you been slipping in the happy pills? Oh, or what? He's, he's a teddy bear. No, I uh, I don't know what I was getting so worked up about. He's really easy to talk to. Listen to, you mean? Well, yeah, he does like the sound of his own voice, but he was so cool about the stuff getting robbed. I explained. Hey. You have played a blinder. <laughs> <laughs> Let Mel listen to his stories for a bit. Yeah, but not for too long, though, eh? We need to keep him on side. I told you he's not going to fall out with you about it. We still need to work out how to pay him. The bank won't help. We need to buy more time. Hey, work your magic. OK, but if I feel like I'm literally going to die of boredom, then I'll rub my ear like this and you can come and rescue me. Deal? <laughs> Deal. Don't laugh. <laughs> Look, as soon as this rabble have gone, you will have my undivided attention. Hey. You all right? Yeah. Oh, where's mine? Um... I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. A really good lemon curd should always be more tart than sweet. Oh, no, I'm but so sorry it... to interrupt. Um, you said that Bethany was upset. Well, she saw you and Gary going into the flat next door to the community centre. But the pair of you look so happy. Well, ever since when has that been a crime? She's just been giving us hell, Norris, for months. She's made us worried sick. Oh, well, it was ever thus. I mean, I remember bringing home a, a 45 of Elvis's hound dog, and that made my father physically sick. This is a bit more serious. Yeah, she's moved in with an older man. Much older. She used to be fitness mad. Now she's drinking up to all hours. I mean, school's a distant memory. Well, didn't you try to stop her? Yeah, everything. Pleading, bribing, punishing. Gary's come to blows with a boyfriend. It's a big mistake. But why would she resent you being happy? A new home? She thought they had their future all planned out without her. Oh, it was a dump. It was tiny. We only went to view it so that Bethany could have a room of her own. I think you should call and tell her. Tell her what? That the world revolves around her. That when she says jump, you say how high. Norris. Not, it might sound harsh, but perhaps stepping back and giving her a bit of space is precisely what's brought Bethany here today. Yeah, I've always had fast motors, even when I was your age. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna run. Uh, Sit down, Blondie. Take the weight off those pins, eh? <laughs> Don't let Nathan see you doing that. Doing what? This? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is our getaway car. Why? It's the perfect cover. We'll just look like a couple of pensioners out on a jaunt. Yeah, about to spend the night on the hard shoulder. Hey, it's the perfect little run around. Well, that's what they said at the auction. Anyway. Beggars can't be choosers. Whoa! What are you doing? You can't ride up front with me. Well, not until we get to the moors. What if somebody sees you? Where am I supposed to go? Underneath? It's not Cape Fear. Oh, just hurry up and get in the boot. Look, it's quite comfy. I'll put a sleeping bag down. Remember me telling you about that backstage bar? What? I can't hear a word each other saying. Mel? Mel, can you turn the music down? Wait, it's a party. Is she for real? Let's go next door. Uh, no, no, we're fine. Let's just do it. Yeah. Oh. I thought they'd never go to bed. Where the hell have you been? And don't dare say Ferry and Nuns to a convent.
You were right, what you were saying this morning. Mum can't move on. We can't move on. Until we know that all of this is just sorted for good. I went to Leah's. What? And when I got to the house, her stepmom was there. And I recognised her. What, the stalker's someone we know? We don't just know her. We're related to her. It's Auntie Gina. No, oh, she'd have looked like Auntie Gina. No, Gina's had, like, some kind of breakdown. And she's got it into her head that Mum's abandoned her. And then this is what's kick-started all these messages. We can't let Mum and Tim know. Let Mum and Tim know what? She wants a glass of water. Oh, just one of the factory girls mouthing off about Mum having time off. It's nothing. I just don't want her to hear it. What, Beth? I don't know. She's had too many knocks. Yeah, and we've had too many setbacks. Too many secrets. You're terrible liars, a pair of you. What was that you were saying about messages? Well, it's just Beth said... That she wouldn't be surprised if Mum had sent the messages to herself to have more time off work. No, I don't think Beth would have done that. Well, maybe she would. It's not what you were whispering about, is it? Look at us. This child's poisoned us. We're doubting each other now. All right, well, I'll keep stum about Beth. Anything else I want to know, OK? We stand together on this one. No, no. Night. I can't do this for much longer. If Mum finds out, it'll cripple her. Imagine it. The factory girls would have a field day. Councillor Metcalf trolled by her own sister. If we've got, like, the whole cottage, can't I bring a mate? Stacey Lee took Margot to Sense Parks. Yeah. Yeah, next time, eh, if we like the place. Right, well, get in, hun. Are you listening to your music? Yeah. You have got to be kidding me. After all that we said about bringing her. Shh, you planned this. You conned me. Just give me the keys in the car and I'll go by myself. Oi, you ride with us or you get out and walk. Oh! Better not be kidding about the Wi-Fi. Uh, why would I be kidding? Oh, look, I've got your favourite sweets. Right, now buckle up. The adventure starts here. Sarah, make him a large, would you? Oh, celebrating, are we? <sighs> He's 39. What does he got have to say about that? Oh, please, Todd. Don't need to go in, not tonight. We could set up some kind of rotor, you know, meals, goes to the hospital, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice idea. Mm. Be a chance to see how summer is with him as well. Poor kid, eh? Mm. She's lost everything. Seriously, though, what do we know about vulnerable kids? <laughs> Thanks, I'll bring you the change. Well, some things are better. Think about how it was in our day. All stick and no carrot. Children were to be seen and not heard. Yeah, yeah but we, we, we learnt respect. We learnt fear. And for what? So our parents look good, in control, and all we felt was worthless. She's still angry about Jude. I can understand that. I just think if my mother had cared more about me and less of her neighbours, well, life would have been very different. But what do I know? I've never had any children. <sighs> Come on, Bethany, please pick up. Hello. Watch out, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Oh, sorry, mate. Swipe left. You right? You stole him, you know that. Nathan was spot on when he said we'd hit it off. You're not like most girls your age. You got a brain in your head. You can hold a conversation. Thanks. 
You didn't kiss me back. Nathan's girlfriend, I don't think he'd be very happy. He watched us walk in here, didn't he? Relax, Blondie. Look at you. I think you've got the wrong idea. I'm not that kind of girl. Yeah, I know you're not. You're clever. You go a long way. Five seconds is all it takes, remember? When you really want something. Two, three, four, five. If you've been affected by Bethany's story, please go to the itv.com forward slash advice site where details of organisations providing advice and support are available. Next tonight, we head to LA for Lethal Weapon. Mm-hmm.